Detroit Sports Nation. What's good? I am Eric Vincent, your host here at the DSN News Desk. Back to chop it up and check in with you, the best fan base in the world. I appreciate you for being here with me. And yesterday was the start of an amazing period in the hockey world. Uh, NHL free agency jumped off, and the Detroit Red Wings have not slept. They have not missed a beat. They came out aggressive, which I love. In order for us to address it correctly, you know, I, I couldn't undersell you guys. We had to bring in a big gun. We had to bring in one of the hot, smartest hockey minds around. A good friend of mine uh, covers the NHL for the Athletic, a uh, Bully Green State graduate, and one of my former high school classmates, my man Sean Shapiro. Welcome to the news desk. What's up, man? That's quite the intro, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel like I undersold. I could have done a little bit more, man, but I'm really happy that you're here, man. No, it was good. It was good. I appreciate it. It's it's fun to connect this one, man. So I'm, I'm happy to talk about this stuff. <laughs> yes, sir. There's a lot to talk about right now. Like you said, the Red Wings opened up free agency very, very aggressive. Uh, six, oh no, five moves, I believe, yesterday. Uh, just to name a few, adding uh, local star Andrew Kopp uh, from the Rangers, Dominic Kubelik, uh, David Perron, just to name a few. Um, I believe they just signed uh, Mark Pissick earlier this morning. Safe to say, fans should be pretty excited for what's going on right now. Am I correct? Yeah, and you include obviously. I think you should also include the the, the sign and, tr- and the, the trade, and then signing of Vili Huso the other day, who was a restricted free agent. I think we should include that as well as part of what the Wings have done over the last couple of days. And I think for Wings fans, the most exciting part about all of this is what this signals. Right, Detroit has been part of it's been preaching patience. What Steve Eiserman's doing is going to take time. And this is the first time we've seen Detroit go and sign those veteran guys, start to sign some of those guys that, like, that you start to build around when you start to be like, okay, we are actually going to be competing for a playoff spot over the next couple of years. To me, whether you like the player or not, to me, the biggest, sign, the biggest signing that signals all of that is the, the Ben Sherratt signing. He's a 31-year-old defenseman. You sign a 31-year-old defenseman for four years. That's not a rebuild move. Ben Sherratt's not a rebuild move. Ben Sherratt is a guy you bring in because you're selling him on we're going to be trying to do something over the next couple years and that's the type of player you want around a young group that's taken the next step. To me, th- those are kind of what this signals about the law- where the Wings believe they are in the rebuild is the most important and probably the most exciting thing for, for Wings fans because it means that they've moved on from the past, the part of we are just going to kind of exist in the bottom, let young guys kind of be there, and now we're actually ready to jump into the fray. And whether that, and I, I don't know, and we'll talk more about. It, I don't know whether that what the fray means exactly for this season, but it definitely it's definitely an upswing and a turn where the Wings have gone from we're just going to kind of exist and kind of bide our time to we're ready to be a player in this league again, and that should be the most exciting part for for the Wings moving forward right now where. Management recognizes that, ownership recognizes that, and they're ready to kind of start being a part of the NHL again, for lack of a better word. <laughs> I love that for the fans because the Red Wings fans have been the most, some of the most loyal in Detroit sports. Whether the team yeah. is up or down, they're there supporting, and I think that's huge. So let's dig a little bit more on the ice. So you talk about these veteran um, pieces that they just added. How do they complement some of the younger players and stars that the uh, Wings have added thus far earlier uh, in the rebuild? Yeah, I think bringing Andrew Kopp in the five the five year deal is a, is a nice piece of a guy who mm-hmm. adds at, who helps solidify that top six for the Wings, allows the the Raymonds of the world, allows some of those other guys to continue to grow into the starring role basically, but be that solid piece, plays good defensive hockey as a center. Um, I really like the. Uh, He's not a veteran, but I really love the I really love the the Kubalik signing. What Detroit went in with, with Kubalik. Kubalik was kind of a casualty of Chicago is entering a tank of what looks like historic proportions. Let a guy go who scored almost who scored I believe thirty goals two seasons ago. Cannon of a shot is going to be a big addition for part of the power play. I think the Kubalik signing is really is a really big piece. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that I really love, and I, I wanted to mention, even though he's not a UFA. I really like the the Vili Huso move um, to go and sign to trade for Vili Huso's rights from St. Louis and then mm-hmm. sign him as a restricted free agent because between Huso and Nijelkovic now I think Detroit has the goalie tandem you need to build and as we all as as within this sport it's pretty obvious you need that tandem to be able to 
to to move forward. And I think with Nedeljkovic and Grice, with Thomas Grice, who was in last year, we saw there was kind of there wasn't the you you had one guy who was kind of we're still learning a lot about in Nedeljkovic. I think there's a lot there, but we we don't know what it's going to be. And I think Grice there wasn't he wasn't providing enough. And I think with Huso and Nedeljkovic, you have two guys who come in both trying to prove who they are going to be as long-term NHL goalies. And I think for a tandem, I think it's going to be a really nice a, a nice fit there between the two of them. Um, I think Chirac comes in and it allows you – you didn't bring in – you didn't go in and sign a defenseman that's going to steal the spotlight. Right. But you, you brought in a solid guy who is going to allow Mo Sider to continue to be – Mo Sider. You, you didn't bring in a guy that, that was going to take that job, but you brought in that veteran guy that kills penalties, is going to play solid minutes, is going to do those things that allow the younger guy to kind of learn a little bit and give a little bit more leash. So I think overall it's it's stuff that moves in the right way. And then obviously the, the, the Perron signing um, from St. Louis, 27 goals last year. He's a goal scorer. He's a little bit older, but his game is his game has aged well. He's someone, another guy who I think Wings power play is going to look better. And I, I think overall, a lot of steps in the right direction for this team that allow, that bring older guys in who still have some game and also a lot, and don't take away, most importantly probably, too many times you've seen a rebuild where you bring in older guys and they take opportunity or jobs away from the younger guys. Right. And I think, I think Eiserman did a good job of sticking the landing of not taking those opportunities away from those younger guys, not stopping those younger guys from being what you're actually building around and just being having these be key supporting ancillary pieces that are in, in that realm. Okay, which is huge. And you actually hit a point that I think really is establishing and kind of solidifying that this rebuild may be a little over and really they are progressing into something serious because when you have a front office like what the Eiserman has and when they're taking advantage of – teams and fire sales like they did with grabbing Kubelik from Chicago, that shows that they're not just aggressive, but they're 10 steps ahead of teams and they're able to take advantage of these kind of situations. Do you think like with that move and what they've done thus far, this is kind of establishing Detroit as one of the more elite front offices in the NHL right now? Yeah, I, I think Eiserman's always going to have that cachet. Like Tampa winning two cups and then going to the final this past year, like, we all know Iserman helped build that, and take no now take nothing away from Julian Brisebois, who has continued to build in Tampa. But we all know Steve Iserman helped build that Tampa franchise into what it is, and so I think mm -hmm. you're always going to have uh, the Wings front office is always going to have that cachet because of what Iserman did there, and it was kind of the question of watching what he was going to do here within Detroit and to see how to kind of try to replicate that. And I think you're looking at how um, Detroit has drafted, how they've made certain bets that have paid off already. The the cider pick, for example, mm -hmm. that's someone that was, that was a little bit off the board and has obviously paid off tremendously well. Um, I, I think you look at where they're going and you look at the path, and I think it's – it's, it's, I don't know about using the word, I don't know about using the word elite, but it's definitely top. He, he already established himself as one of the better GMs in the league. And it's just kind of, I think, I think it's more solidification that Detroit, he has Detroit on the right path and you have, uh, and, and it's just going to prove that the next line of the resume, like he's always, it's, there's always the resume piece, right? It's always, what he did in Tampa is always going to be a success. Mm -hmm. And now he's proving, so thus far he's proving that he's going to be able to get Detroit there. And I, and I think, uh, it's going to be really interesting when we finally get Steve Eiserman to publicly say, okay, we're actually going for it. Cause he's been slow playing everything, right? Like right. everything, even, even when they hired Derek Lalonde the other day at the press conference, they're, 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 they're slow playing everything we're, we're still part of the process, start of the process. I think once uh, it's going to be really interesting to judge Detroit once uh, he finally admits publicly, Hey, this is a team that that's going to win this year. It's going to be really interesting to see when that happens, because I think he's still kind of slow playing a little bit more, even so, then uh, just to kind of help hamper expectations in a good way, right? Like where, like th th with with the goal, what the goal is for this team, where you want to build, because the Wings aren't winning the cup this year, they're not winning the cup next year, but they want to be in the running, they want to be able in a spot where you could say, you know what, they're in that conversation sooner than later, and so I think it's kind of a, it's been a very fascinating public. Uh, massaging of it from Iserman. So I'm really looking forward to see what, what happens when he's kind of gives the green light of like, Hey, we we're all go bonkers over this. <laughs> <laughs>
and it's coming. It's got to be 2.5 from that happening with the fans. Uh, You brought up uh, Lalonde being pried away from the Lightning uh, earlier this month. Um, Stepping in as a new coach, he's got to be thrilled even as well with this new crop of excitement. I mean, they had young foundation pieces, which is obviously important to have, but a front office willing to bring in an overhaul with this much talent has got to give him a voting confidence going forward, right? Yeah, and I, and I think it's something where you don't leave. I mean, there was eight NHL head coaching jobs this year, mm-hmm. and um, there's there's still one open right now, actually, in San Jose. Um, but you don't leave. You don't leave a. Uh, some people would. Some people would leave for any head coaching job. But I think you don't leave Tampa unless you're going to a spot where you think that you can have success and you have the confidence that you can be part of the plan. And I think, I think that's a big thing that sometimes people run into in the NHL when it comes to coaches is sometimes the worry is if you take a quote unquote rebuild job, are you going to be there to see it out through the end? Just because is there going to be the confidence and is there going to be the patience at the same time? And I think Lalonde knows and comes in that he knew this before even the signings today, but I think he knows that there is a space where he has the chance to grow this team. He has the chance to go through some learning curves if, if need be and everything like that. And it's part of the, it's part of, it's part of the build towards build building a team that's super competitive in three, four years. That, that, that is going to be really, that is going to be, that is going to be one of those where you're like, okay, this is a very good team in three to four years. And he gets to see that through and build to that. And I think that's going to be, that's a huge thing to have as a coach. Cause there are some rebuild jobs where you take it and there's too much of a, uh, requirement for instant gratification that the coach ends up never seeing through it. So I think Lalonde already had that confidence. And I think the signings today and to bring in one of the things that he talked about was he really wanted to help build the defensive structure. Cause that's mm-hmm. one of the big things that, that the wings kind of really with the young group really needed. Mm-hmm. And I think the signings with Sherratt with a, with a cop and everything like that. I think those guys really help him in that message as he kind of builds this team. Gotcha. So kind of just to wrap it up a little bit, you've mentioned yeah, yeah. about their postseason hopes and yeah. where you think they will be in the next three to four years. Yeah. Um, considering they've you know been laying this foundation down for a little while, what do you think their ceiling and their floor is for this coming season? I mean, I, I think I think the ceiling is a playoff team. I don't think I wouldn't pick Detroit to be a playoff team right now. Going going into this season, I think to be fair, you look at um, the team, the eight Eastern Conference teams that were in the playoffs last year. There's obviously always going to be change over and everything like that, but Ottawa had a tremendous – Ottawa and Vision Rival had a tremendous offseason and is mm-hmm. going to be pushing hard to get into the playoffs. They signed Claude Giroux. They, they, tra- they traded for um, DeBrinket, fellow uh, North Farmington uh, grad, ironically enough. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and uh, Ottawa is a team that's going to be pushing hard to be in there. Um, I don't know. It's Columbus ended up landing the biggest free agent of the day in Johnny Goudreau. And so mm-hmm. there's, there's going to be – the East got a lot more interesting. And I think um, – at a ceiling, Detroit's a playoff team. I don't think they're, I wouldn't say how many rounds or anything like that, but the ceiling, but I think at a floor, Detroit is part of that much more interesting Eastern Conference now. They're part of that group where we're going to be, you're going to be looking and you're going to be like, okay, there's going to be a group of, I don't know, let's say five to, five to six teams for three spots or something like that. And I think Mm -hmm. that you can expect Detroit to be in that conversation throughout the season of like, okay, they should be, playing meaningful games through March and April. And, and if, if a couple of things go the right way, if the goaltending, if the goaltending ends up being what it could potentially be, maybe they're the team that's in. If they're not, it's not the end of the world because the plan is, the plan is not to make the playoffs and win the Stanley cup this year. The plan is to build this year, to continue to build, be in, be in the right spot, continue to see some of these younger guys really take the next step and the other thing that just kind of it's it's the best spot to be in the weird mushy middle for lack of a better word right cuz next year's draft is supposed to be very good so mm-hmm. it's it's the case it's the case too where you get in the playoffs great you're ahead of schedule you miss you're in the lottery and so like i think detroit is in a spot where the ceiling is the floor is great the ceiling's better because you get playoff hockey in detroit again but i think either way anywhere in between you're happy with where the wings are going to be this year um and, and that's really all you can ask for right now. And then you start to add more expectations based off what happens this year um, to following years. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. And you know, you, you said a, you give them a, a little 
tricky thing to do. Temper expectations in the summertime. Yeah. It's hard, but I think it's possible yeah. here. I mean, you see yeah. the right steps being laid yeah. down. Uh, it's a great time to be a Red Wings fan, man. And I appreciate you stepping on and hanging out with us today. Uh, would love to hear from you, of course. Let me know down below. Uh, let us know on our YouTube page. Uh, comment on the video. Let us know how excited you are about these moves, where you think the floor and the ceiling is for this Red Wings team. And if you think Iserman has more moves left, let us know what you think. Uh, subscribe to the channel on Detroit Sports Nation. Check out our socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of the above. I'll be back to chop it up with you again soon. Sean, I appreciate you hanging out with us, man, here on the DSN News Desk. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you again soon next time.